Hello my classy people, how y'all doing? My name is Wayne Bolden. As always, please turn on your closed capture. That way you can see the narrative going across the screen of each horse that we're analyzing. And of course, if you want to get our tip sheet, please email us at speaking24 at yahoo.com. And of course, as always, do us a big favor by subscribing. That really helps us a bunch. Like our videos, comment, which is my favorite part. I answer each and every one of them, or at least I try to, I really do. So again, we can really use your support here for sure. We're taking a look at uh, all the stake races that we can do here on the channel for Saturday. And it's Saturday night under the lights. You know, I wouldn't be right if I didn't do one of these stake races from Florence, Kentucky. One of my favorite racetracks in the country or in the world. And it's the Serena Song Stake Race. That's right, Serena Song. What a nice, nice horse. I think D. Wayne Lucas trained Serena, Serena Song. You classy people straighten me out with that. I believe it was, though. And in the sixth race, Saturday night under the light, where I'm there every Saturday night. And Wednesday night, Thursday night, any time Turfway's running, I'm there. Trust me. Right? And so... Uh, anything goes at Turfway, and the Serena song is $100,000, $100, six furlongs, a small field of seven. I wanted to do one of these races, so let's run right through it. The number one horse, Quora Ben uh, Dorada, uh, Dorota, Dorata, right? Quora Ben Dorata, the number one horse, a very, very nice horse, 12 to 1 on the morning line. This three-year-old filly uh, is a very, very nice filly. I think it's going to turn into a nice filly. And I think she offers some value here. I think she can be kind of sneaky good. Lobo is our trainer. She only won one race from four starts. But I tell you, the last race she uh, ran was a very interesting race, right? I thought it was interesting that this horse uh, was put, uh, ran on uh, Broker Maiden, on February 16th at Turfway. The pace was very, very fast, but she's speedy enough to stay up close. And she earned a very, very nice speed figure some 38 days ago. And I think that that uh, could translate into, uh, you know, moving forward. And at 12 to 1, I'm probably going to have this horse, Cora Ben Dorada, on my tickets. I like the number one, at least as my third pick here, for sure. Well, the number two horse in here, uh, sea level. Well, I did a big thing a long time ago, maybe a year or so ago, on sea level. And this is a merry horse. It's Brad Cox and all his big head horses. And sea level, I like this horse, right? Sea level is by Extragator, Extragator, uh, three starts, two wins, and one third. And again, is making her three-year-old debut off of a 127-day freshening. Now, I want to tell you something. Um, I think this horse is going to move forward. It is Barry, uh, Barry uh, Butson um, and uh, Joni Butson. And I think those are uh, friends of a friend. I think Scotty Max knows those. And you know Scotty Mack is our channel ambassador and how much re respect we have for him. And we like sea level in this spot, making her a three-year-old debut. Her speed figures are a little light relative to some of these in here, but you have to remember she left back in November, so I project where she would have been if she would have been running. And it puts her right in the game, okay? And I would like to see Joni and Barry win uh, this race. I mean, I don't, you know, then, you know, they have a lot of nice horses. They are the owners and breeders of sea level. And I did a big, big thing on this horse. I remember that. And so, uh, making her uh, debut here, uh, three-year-old debut, first time on the synthetic. And uh, we'll see how she does, you know. Uh, speed figures, again, if you're looking at it as a two-year-old, they're lighter. But again, that's some 127 days ago. And so as I project as young horses with only three starts get better, where she would be if she was racing. And again, she's won two of three and ran second the other third time. So, I mean, don't be counting sea level out here. I like this horse a little bit in this spot. 
The number three horse promised to dance. Well, look at this here three-year-old filly by Broken Vow. Has four starts, two wins, and two seconds. Trained by who? The Merry Horse, right? It's Brad Cox who has his second entry in here. And this is a very, very nice horse. Seven to two on the morning line. Earned a beautiful, beautiful speed figure. And of course, they're all going to have to beat the number four, Marissa's Lady. But again, this horse did run second to Marissa Lady back there as a two-year-old on December 26th. And then she was away for 48 days, came back on February 10th, ran a beautiful race and again is back after 44 days which is the second race off the layoff as a three-year-old she may have marissa lady in her sight crosshairs for sure the number three horse promised to dance is going to do some dancing here and she may tap dance on top of marissa's lady who's a very fine horse the number four horse who we're going to start talking about right here right now in a hurry i've played this horse quite a bit you have to be you know you almost have to hire somebody to have you miss how good marissa's lady is she has five starts four wins in one second and we've all probably cashed tickets on her because she shows up this race but again i know i did because all of her races except the first all of her races are in kentucky and i follow the kentucky circuit exclusively she's got uh four uh two wins at turfway two wins at um churchill and the last race on march 5th in the overnight stake race which was the uh cincinnati trophy stakes she ran second to bubble rock that is another brad cox horse so again i'm telling you right now this horse has very rarely been headed marissa's lady and again how are you going to knock her you can't her speed figures are fantastic and again she's even money on the morning line and rightly so she's by violence it's william maury and you got bayer ronald in the yarn so the number four is deservedly to be the favorite here for sure marissa's lady how do you make your money carefully that's how i make my shackles well the number five horse is 20 to one and probably should be 40 to one now, i tell you the number five is seriously overmatched six wins two starts i mean trebetta is our trainer of record i like him and kimura is in the yards but this horse is overmatched how you make your money let's throw her out right away and here is the horse that I'm going to look for value with. Yes, that's right, Yin Yang. Right, Yin Yang, the number six, has five starts, two wins, uh, one third and one second. The horse is by point of entry, and this is Brad Cox's third horse, of course, right? So Yin Yang is a very, very nice horse in her own right. Obviously, the speed figures are a cut below most of these, but again, she's pretty speedy. She's got enough speed to sit in the catbird and pounce on these horses. I like this horse as a, a uh, real value upset in this race for sure. I think that she has every right to run and run big in this spot. So again, she's probably going to be one of my top, top two picks in here just from a value standpoint for sure. The number seven horse, well, Ruthen. Well, uh, Ruthen is a three-year-old filly. You know, she only has two starts and one win. Um, she's come by way of overseas Ascot. She's been running on the turf. She's trying to synthetic. Wesley Ward is our trainer. I'm really not sure what to make of him other than this. The number seven horse, Ruth, uh, Ruthen, is Wesley Ward. Now, when you see Wesley Ward with these babies coming from Ascot and he has them, I'm telling you, Wesley Ward works these horses out at these training tracks where you really have no idea other than the uh, workouts. And when you look at the workouts on this horse, he's got some beautiful, beautiful bullets everywhere. And I think this horse is very speedy out of the gate. Only seven to two on the morning line. And again, um, you know, he has a lot of good people working for him. None more than, you know, uh, uh, Garcia and um, a lot of good jobs working for him. So he get these horses prime and ready, and they'd be ready to pop these young horses. And the number seven horse, Ruth, and is seven to two. And I think she's going to take some, you know, that we should probably take a look at this one for sure, Okay. Not ready to throw her off the ticket. Chris Landeros is in the orange. Him and Wesley Ward are clicking at a 
uh, take here. You've got black type, uh, you've got black bullet works everywhere. So I think the number seven is viable. I hate the price on her at seven to two, uh, not knowing what kind of quantity she is here. But she did break her maiden at Keenan on April 22nd before she went to England and Ascot. She went gate to wire with Rosario at 3 to 5. So again, the number 7 is a serious win contender in here, if you ask me, and will be threatening Miss Marissa for sure. Well, there is your steak race Saturday nights under the light. It is the Serena song. And I'm going to do something that I typically don't do, right? I'm going to go ahead. And I'm going to use the number six as my top pick, Ying Yang. I think the horse has a great shot. It's eight to one on the morning line. I do have Joe Talamo. It's one of three horses that Brad Cox have in here. Of course, he has the number two C level at eight to one. That's Barry and Joni's horse who will be rooting for. And of course, he has the uh, third favorite in the race or co-favorite. Promise to dance the number three horse. So Brad Cox is sitting there with the two, three, and six. I like the six. I like the value. I think the horse could be kind of sneaky good in this spot. So I'm going to make him thy top pick at eight to one, which is great value. And my second pick here, it's really, really hard to knock Marissa's lady. I gotta make her my second pick. It would be disingenuous if I didn't. It's one thing to try to beat her, but it's another thing to not put her on the ticket. That's just not good handicapping, if you ask me. She's too fast, she's too consistent, and Leo Mori has done his work with this here filly. So Marissa Lady obviously is the horse to beat, if you ask me, and I'm going to tell you right now, she will be my second pick as equally as my first pick, okay? I mean, I'm just looking for a little value here. She is clearly the horse to beat in here. And, of course, I think Brad Cox has a very nice runner and promise to dance. Uh, this horse is very, very talented, has four stars, two wins in two seconds, by Broken Val, ran out of the TV screen here on the 10th of February at Turfway, gate to wire. This is a nice horse. And I tell you right now, when Marissa's lady beat this horse in the sin in the um, uh, goes well stakes she ran second to her but she's not the same horse I think this horse has improved tremendously to number three promise to dance and may give Marissa's lady all she can handle in here I, as a matter of fact I'm pretty certain she will so our third pick equally is promise to dance um, in here now the X factor is how good is Wesley Ward's horse on the bottom I'm going to tell you that she's pretty good, probably. You know, Wesley Ward only spot these horses where they can flat out run. And the way that this horse uh, ran out of the TV screen on the day that she broke her maiden as a two-year-old back there on April 22nd at Keeneland on the turf, it doesn't surprise me that this horse is 7-2 on the morning line. So this is a very nice race, a very competitive race. Short price horses in here are starting with none more than Marissa Lady rightly so, but I'm going to look around. So my top pick is going to be the number six. I'm being a little cute here. Um, Yin Yang is our number six at eight to one. I think Brad Cox could have this horse as being sneaky good. And our second pick has to be Marissa's lady. She's just too good not to say she's your first or second pick in here, okay? And my third pick, again, would be um, uh, Promise to Dance. Uh, I just think this horse who ran second to Marissa Lady is ready to move forward, and I like her a whole, whole bunch here. Now, that being said, there's two X factors here. Barry and uh, Joni has C-Level, who I did a big, big thing on, and I think this here three-year-old Phillies returning after 100-plus days is better than when she left. Obviously, she should be, and at 8-1, to one, I may try to work her in there somehow. It's hard for me not to like C-Level here. And again, again with uh, Wesley Ward's horse on the bottom. So, that being said, it's a real even race over here in the Serena song. Saturday night, under the lights in Florence, Kentucky. Small field, uh, but very competitive. And I'm going to demand some value here. I get it. I'm going to use Yin Yang as my top pick. Marissa Lady as my second pick. And, of course, Promise to Dance as my third pick. With my eye on Joni and Barry's horse, the number two, the old C-level. 
Stay classy, y'all. Tell me what you think. Email me at speedking24 at yahoo.com. Stay classy. Big weekend coming up.